Hey, welcome back. You're watching TV3 New Day. It's now time for Big Issues, where we discuss relevant issues making the rounds or making the headlines in the country. Now, this morning, I have been instructed to inform you by our resident, Mama Cash, Cookie T, that for cash out today, we're not giving away 4,000 cities. We're giving away 5,000 cities. So she is guaranteeing 1,000 Ghana cities for five people watching the show today. So please dial star 439 hash, star 439 hash. That's the number to dial if you are an MTN subscriber or a Telesel subscriber. Dial star 439 hash. And then select option two for TV3 and follow the prompts. That's how you win on the show this morning. So dial and win. Yesterday, um, Dada Cash, Roland Walker, gave 2,000 Ghana CDs to two people. Today, Cookie is giving 5,000 Ghana CDs to five people. So, so dial and let's see your number on the dashboard and then you can win. It's pretty simple, but you have to be an MTN subscriber or a Telesel subscriber. It's a Thursday. That means that we have our ladies here in the studios with us to discuss the relevant issues on the table today. And I know that if you have been following the proceedings in Parliament for the last couple of weeks, you know that it's been really interesting. Um, there have been some legal and constitutional issues, some procedural issues, which have taken over the news and we're all discussing. Um, it, be, it began, I think, um, with the Speaker of Parliament declaring four seats vacant. Following that, the Supreme Court ruled, staying the execution of the declaration of the Speaker of Parliament. Soon after that, on Tuesday, when Parliament reconvened, um, the Speaker adjourned sittings indefinitely because he did not have the quorum to make decisions in the House on Tuesday. Then we saw, which we, we, we shared with you this morning, a memo from the MPP caucus asking that the Speaker reconvene Parliament um, so that they can discuss urgent government business. And the legal basis um, for this memo they sent, they stated in the memo, is the Article 112 of the 1992 Constitution, as well as Order 53 of the Standing Orders of the House. So um, that's the memo we've displayed on the screen. And we read a bit of it just so that um, we are informed. So. The memo basically says, right, Honorable Speaker, respectfully, on behalf of myself, and this was from the Deputy Majority uh, Chief Whip, on behalf of myself and the requisite number of members of Parliament from the Majority Caucus, I have the honour to address you on a matter of utmost national importance in accordance with Article 1123 of the Constitution of the Republic of Ghana, 1992, and Standing Order 53 of the Parliament of Ghana, we hereby formally request a meeting of Parliament. The signatories of the members making this request are here to attached. The legal basis for the request is Article 1123 of the 1992 Constitution, which states that notwithstanding any other provision in this article, 15% of the members of Parliament may request a meeting of Parliament, and the Speaker shall within seven days after the receipt of the request, summon Parliament. The Standing Order 53.1 also reiterates the same. Despite any other provision, 15% of the members of Parliament will request a meeting of Parliament, and the Speaker shall, within seven days of receipt of the request, summon Parliament. And 53.2 um, of the Standing Orders also stipulates that Parliament shall convene within seven days after the issuance of the notice of summons. All right, so that's the legal basis for the request. Now, they state further in the memo, if we could go down a bit, that the reason for this request is to attend to urgent matters for consideration. And these urgent matters listed in the memo are, one, request for tax exemptions for designated beneficiaries under one district, one factory program. The Ghana Financial Stability Fund, an international development association facility, of 250 million United States dollars. And then the bills before Parliament, which um, according to this memoir, urgent, and for which reason the, the Speaker needs to reconvene the House, are uh, one, the Environmental Protection Agency Bill 2024, Social Protection Bill 2023, Customs Interbanket Amendment Bill 2024, the Budget Bill 
2023, the Ghana Boundary Commission Bill 2023, and the Institute Succession Bill uh, 2022. And then they go on to give um, the justification and context. We'll get, we'll get into this further as we go. But first, let me introduce my guests who are here and seated uh, to you, and then we'll get into this. First, Nanaya, Nanaya Achipim Jantua, the former General Secretary of the CPP is here. Good morning, Nanaya. Mm -hmm. Great to have you. You're welcome. Thank you. I missed you all last week um, while I was in the Northern Region. We did miss you too. Also here with us this morning is Ellen Amadaku, NPP Communications Team Member. Good morning, Ellen. How are you? I'm fine. I've lost my box. Sorry about that. Okay. You look very bright in your red T-shirt. Thank you. Also in the studio with us is Rodlin Imoro Iyana, member of the Alliance Ayana, member for uh, member of the Alliance for Revolutionary Change. Good morning, Rodlin. You never go without the yellow. <laughs> it has to be. I saw I saw some um, cashew nut sellers in traffic in yellow aprons, and I thought this yellow this yellow is very visible. It's, yeah, it's very yellow. <laughs> also in the house with us this morning is Beatrice Annan, Deputy Spokesperson for the John Mahama Campaign Team and also a legal practitioner. Hello. Yeah, welcome to the show. Thank you, ma'am. Great to have you, ladies. And um, so we, we've seen the memo. In, and in fact, I'm sure we've all followed the proceedings in Parliament over the last couple of weeks, which has led us to this point uh, of the MPP caucus asking the Speaker to reconvene Parliament shortly after Parliament was um, suspended indefinitely um, because the Speaker did not have the quorum to make decisions because um, the MPP caucus at that time had left the chamber and gone to their offices. Um, Ellen, let me, let me begin with you. What is your general assessment of all that has happened in Parliament, bringing us to this point? Much ado about nothing. Much ado about nothing. Yeah. Can you explain further? Good morning to our viewers. Good morning to all, um, uh, let me say, all Ghanaians and specifically NPP members in the Buno and Buno East regions. I'm just coming from there, so okay. my thanks to them all the hard work we are putting in to make sure that Dr. Baumia becomes the next president of Ghana. Uh, I'll go back to Accra just to, yeah, I had had snipers, but I just go back to actually sit down and listen to everything that had gone on in Parliament. And as I said, I think it's much ado about nothing. How am I saying that? This particular eighth Parliament has been a Parliament of drama, a Parliament of, of pool, let me pool, a Parliament of I don't think they've, got much, they've gotten much done, honestly, in the last four years. So for me, it's the same attitude they started with on, on January 7th, and it's the same attitude that they are going to end with. And uh, for a parliament that is on its way out, you have barely three months to get out, and you have so many things to do, and you decide to, as I say, major in the... In the, in the little things, instead of focusing and getting your job done. What are the For little me, things in this matter? What, what we are doing, honestly, is to what end? W which of the things? A few All, things that everything happened. that is happening is to what end? Starting your, your from... Job, your job as parliamentarians and your job as a parliament is to pass bills, make laws, get, get, get government business going. You have been at this for the past four years. If they have, you've had what I'll call a hung parliament with, with one independent deciding where to go. He decided uh, three years ago where he wanted to sit. We have just barely three months to go and then the speaker decides to do what he did. And then the minority decides to go and sit in the majority side two days ago. And when the majority worked out, they decided to do a match pass and have what I'll call the kindergarten play chairs and going around and all that in Parliament. They should get down to business, honestly. They are grown adults. All, all of them are over 18 years. There's a criteria for getting into Parliament. Everyone there passed that criteria to get there. They should get the job done. For me, if you ask for my opinion, I think they are just, perhaps they just don't want to do their job. And everything I've said is directly, is directed at the minority side of Parliament. Not both sides. No, 
obviously the MPP side see the the need for them to get their jobs done. The reason in the, the in the next adjourned parliamentary sittings indefinitely is because he did not have the numbers to have a decision making quorum. And that's because the MPP the side numbers? the MPP side had left the chamber to and their why offices. Did they, leave? they left because somebody chose to sit on their chair. Does it matter? And instead chair you yeah, sit on that order is why, to that make is why they did, that's why they determined there's a minority there's a majority side. So if you decide to become as I said, become a kindergarten child and move from your seat and go and take your brother's seat. And your brother says, I won't fight with you. I mean, we are over, as, as the, the, the majority leader said, uh, they are, he's not going to sit there and go and fight over chess for his children to see him on TV fighting over chess. I think they've learned, uh, the majority side learned a lesson from what happened in uh, January 7, 2021, when the whole nation and every one of them was embarrassed by the actions there. And they decided that they were not going to mind them. So if the... Who, who actually sent this memo? Is the, the deputy, majority, the deputy, is the deputy majority, majority chief. Majority chief would have sent the memo. There are legal processes that they have to pass. So I think they have seven days. The speaker has seven days to either consider it or not consider it and all those things. They should get it done and get their job done. When you said, so some of when us, you began, are, that parliament should not major in the minors, mm -hmm. I appreciated that statement because they need to focus on important government business. And so would you call deciding to vacate parliament or leave the room because somebody has allegedly sat on your chair so the question not they, why majoring, the majority there were many chairs in, the, in, in the house on, 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 on their, the matter their on who was majority and minority was still under contention it's not under contention it's not there was a court order a supreme court order that says that whatever the decision the the speaker had the speaker made, had made should be stayed. Should be stayed. Exactly. So when you come into parliament, you go and sit at your seat. So until that, until that decision, until until a determination is made on, on, on made. that decision. But don't you so think why would you go and sit on somebody's chair? Don't you think it would have been prudent for them to wait for the speaker to come? Prudent or who to said? make a, for, really on both parties? Mm -hmm. For the speaker to come and make his determination, the speaker and could then, not have and then they would have they would have found a way forward. The speaker could not have made a determination because whatever decision he had taken, the Supreme Court had put uh, a stay on it. So when you walked into Parliament, you go and sit on your seats where you've been sitting for the past three years, so that you go ahead with government business or parliamentary business. And then mm -hmm. when there's a decision by the Supreme Court, and then the speaker can then make a decision on who sits where. But when you decide to go and sit on somebody's chair, you want the person to come and fight you. Grown ass men, grown ass women should come and fight over chairs in parliament. So I think that the MPP took a good decision. The MPP decided to, 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 leave get, the to house. just leave them and let them have the space to themselves. And then you saw what they did with the time and the energy that God had given them to do. You saw the sort of display they put up there. For me, it was a total waste of everybody's time. But now that the majority side says they should come back to parliament, let's see how it will go. We have barely six weeks to a general election. Most of the parliamentarians in there, including the ones who are doing the dancing chairs, are going for re-election. I think their focus and our focus should be the next parliament of Ghana, the next government of Ghana, the focus and, how of to get, and how to get things going. So they should finish with what they have exactly. in the next three months exactly. and then move on. The focus so of parliament the, the, should be the, to pass laws, like you said, and conduct government business. What is the real significance? And then before I move on to um, the real significance of the chair that you sit on in order if to conduct... Was, no, what, I'm, I'm no asking you, to it, there's, there, is, not... there is a misunderstanding about who's majority and who's minority. You say that you should focus on the majors and not major in the minors. You have entered the house and people are apparently sitting on your chair. But of course you are the bigger person and you want to conduct government business like you have written to the speaker. Why can you just sit on available seats and let's conduct government business? Yeah. Let the speaker make his declaration on, 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 what, I, on I, what his I, way I forward is. Mm -hmm. I have sat on a seat mm -hmm. for three years. Mm -hmm. I come and somebody is sitting on it. Then I should go and find another seat. It's not a me. normal day where someone has just come to sit on your chair. Out. There has for me, been there has for me, been Ellen, a I will not sit on anybody's chair. Mm. I'll move out and So the chair is so important. Went. Of course, that is All why right. the chairs represent where you come from. All right. So when the other side decides to become kindergarten kids and sit on my chair, I'll become the bigger person. But and you will leave somewhere. so that the proceedings of parliament are invited indefinitely. You want me to sit there and fight? All right. Uh, let, let, me, let me come to... Um,
Beatrice, and then I'll come to Nanaya and Rodlane. Yes, um, Beatrice. Nashako, I, I just think that I should express a bit of disappointment when members of parliament are called kindergarten kids and you don't ask that that should be retracted. I think that is not fair. All right. Especially when there is no member of parliament on the set. Yes, and you're right. You, you, sh right. you should have intervened. I, I want to say that, you see, the MPP is so disorganized that everything shows they cannot manage their party and certainly any valid expectation that they should manage the country better is just something that we should not have. Why do you say so? I saw the memo and it's so laughable. We all watched the event that took place last Tuesday live on TV. What had happened was that the MPP had staged a walkout because they said they believe in peace or whatever. After they had bathed their members and nights before to the, I mean, to the premises of parliament to come and cause mayhem. And they realized that the NDC... They bust their they, members they, they bust, Yes, they bust their members. What is the role of party people at the premises of parliament? Did anybody bust them there? Yes, they were buzzed. They were buzzed by Anodompre. He buzzed them from his constituency. They were wearing his shirt and that of Baumia's shirt. So he cannot tell. And he was there as early as the people who were buzzed to go and sit down. The MPP is very disorganized. And not, and not just this organized, very dishonest entity. And Ghanaians must know that unless we change these group of dishonest people, nothing you are complaining about will change. First of all, you boycotted parliament on the basis that the majority were sitting at where the majority has to sit. And so you were peaceful and you leave. Now, let me ask, assuming Speaker should even act on this memo and recall Parliament, mm -hmm. and the majority goes to sit where the majority ought to sit, will the minority leader, Afenyo Markin, lead others to boycott again, if it's about chess? Because they, it appears that the reason they boycotted was because they said that people were sitting at where they used to sit. So the question we must ask is that if the NDC goes back and the NDC will go back because that is our rightful place, will they boycott and then later recall seven days again? I think that the jokes are becoming too much. Afenyo Markin is just protecting his ego. He just, I mean, if you look at how he's been fighting journalists on why he should be addressed as majority leader and nothing more. We've seen parliament before. This is about the eighth parliament. What it means is that we've had a first to the seventh parliament. One thing that parliament does is consensus building. In fact, our members of parliament have come under huge criticism of, I mean, letting government have its way, letting government uh, business proceed, because some people feel that there are certain things that they must block. And so this is someone who certainly does not have the leadership skill that the, a leader needs to build the set consensus. Look at how he was running, granting interview, calling people names everywhere. And then when you come to parliament, you want the situation to be easy. But let me, let me show you the dishonesty okay. in what the MPP is doing. When every one of us was complaining about Galamse and organized labor, and everybody in this country, democracy have, the young people, women, everybody said that something was killing this nation, which is Galamse. The president who had the power to grant mining leases or licenses for people to mine in forest reserves and in fact exercise that discretion in the most arbitrary manner and that's why we landed where we are, told everybody, including organized labor, that we will revoke the LI 2462. And so for that matter, it was so urgent that we will recall parliament so that we will revoke it so organized labor cannot go to. 
Now, please, I want you to help viewers yourself and read for viewers as part of the memo and the petition. The agent government the business. The agent government business. Where in that do you have a revocation of the LI-2462? Where? It's not there. It shows you the dishonesty of this government. They lie to every Ghanaian that the NDC and President Mahama was against free SHS. And for today, whatever our challenges are, if you have a kidney issue, it can be solved by free SHS. If you have finished school for seven years, five years, you cannot find jobs, it is free SHS. If you complain about the prices of bread, yam, milo, water, sugar, your solution is free SHS. They told us that they were bringing an act to parliament to protect the free SHS. Please read again. Do you have any bill on the free SHS? So it, it should tell you that these guys are dishonest for all the things they have listed. Government just wants to go for $250 million loan. Again, at the time when our debt to GDP is practically killing us, we are not even out of the debt exchange. People are suffering. We are talking about a time when we are grappling with inflation, economic hardship, and lots of things are going on wrong. Government's focus is to go for an additional loan. And you know that the most painful one is to give businesses tax incentives. As if it was not enough that in the past, Nanado gave his brother-in-law tax incentives. Is that how we use the powers of the state to benefit ourselves? and then gaslight the citizens and turn back and blame the NDC that does not have the responsibility to do any of these things. I want Ghanaians to know this morning that the MPP are a group of dishonest people who say one thing and they do differently. All right, um, Beatrice, the, the genesis of, of this whole issue and mm -hmm. why we are here today, mm -hmm. um, flowing from this memo that we have seen as, from the MPP asking the Speaker to reconvene the House is the fact that there's a disagreement about who's majority and who's minority. There is no disagreement. The, the MPP is holding itself as majority. The NDC is also holding itself as majority. Now, the Supreme Court made a ruling staying the execution of the Speaker's decision mm -hmm. or declaration in the house saying that the four seats they're declaring those four seats vacant why is the ndc even after the ruling of the supreme court still holding itself as majority what, what the speaker made a pronouncement that the ndc is the majority in fact we must agree that this is the same speaker that when parliament was in session the first sitting of parliament NDC had 137, MPP had 137. Nobody had more numbers than the other. Mm -hmm. This is the same speaker that said that the MPP was the majority. Now, this is the same because, speaker because saying one that... one independence candidate was doing business yes, with the MPP. But, but yes, that, that's true. So that is the same speaker who said that the MPP was the majority. So if the same speaker, by reason of the fact that... But there's no confusion there. Who told you? Because one independence candidate is doing business with... One side. Okay, so let me ask so, you. So now that that one independent candidate has stopped being an independent candidate and is a member, is no longer a member of the M or now an MPP person, do you think that the speaker, on the basis of the same capacity of the same man, should not declare another party? Which he did. Now the Supreme yes. Court has said that so, so that if declaration you, if you watch should the proceedings, stay. Now, if you watch the proceedings mm -hmm. of that day carefully, mm -hmm. the speaker said. I have been served with something from the Supreme Court. You mean the day he adjourned? Yes. yes, yes, yes. And Parliament must take a decision on that matter. So following the Supreme said. Court yes. ruling, Parliament said, must par still yes, make a decision. Yes, that's what the Speaker said. So the Supreme Court ruling does not, um, so to Parliament speak, override. Must take, yes, Parliament must take a decision. Okay. Whether within the understanding of the Constitution and the standing orders, the Speaker was bound or Parliament will not be bound. The speaker said, we had the numbers to do business. But not to But we decision. do not have the numbers to make a decision. So if the MPP wants us to believe 
that there are so many urgent matters for which reason parliament ought to have taken a decision Th that's whether, a different wait, issue wait wait now whether no, you, the you speaker to a wait, different issue. whether the speaker's decision should be stayed or not they needed to be so in, have the been in the house but so now so that they are not Ellen, in the Ellen house will respond to that but so i've now heard that, some mm -hmm. of your colleague lawyers talk about the fact that <laughs> the supreme court's decision or decisions of the court must be obeyed even if the person who it is against feels that it is bad law. If, they can go back I agree with to you, the court I and agree. ask. But so it, why isn't the NPP just obliging? No, so if, while the speaker writes so, back so wait, to me, Parliament me, or me. to the Supreme Court. Now let me say that if, whether the decision of the Supreme Court ought to be obeyed or not, a decision has to be taken. You people are not in the house for the decision to be taken. So what do you want us to do? All right. The, 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 let, me, let me conclude. The people who have the responsibility to make the decisions boycotted parliament. And you want to place the obligation on us who are not in government and who do not have that decision or that power to make that the government point decision. Is you should have just started a minority side. Who, who because, says who? So, says because who? Says who? So if the Supreme Court decision operates to render the, uh, the speaker's earlier declaration halted or stayed, then things ought to return to how they used at the to be time, that, so that the NDC at is the time minority. We sat, so why did you just time, not go to the At the time we sat side? down, were you aware whether we had been served or not? At the time we sat down. Okay. At the time we came and we sat down, could you tell whether the minority had been served? So it is in waiting for official service. So that's what I'm saying that, that you would if go the NPP said the that there were men enough, okay. they right. should have stayed on to fight. They, you they cannot run away. Were, didn't say that. You cannot run away and they, then later come they, and hide they behind they your mother to, and to, be crying they said and be saying, they left in in so that there will be peace. Which peace? So there will not be who, chaos. Who, 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 where was so the chaos? Not where was the chaos? Yes. So that there will not they be... They had bad their people because you, like, they were anti Did you not chaos? bad people? Did the NDC not bad people? We NDC. Because we saw did on you? TV people in NDC. It is not true. Palace as well. Which TV? Okay. TV3 carried its life. Which TV? Nah? Okay. It is never true. We, you think NDC is as okay. lawless as MPP? Okay. We, we will never do that. Okay. Let's, let's, let's talk to um, Nanaya now. now. Let's, let's your, your time work go. Nanaya, you haven't even started talking. <laughs> Today, when I started, you gave me instructions. Yes, but I, I told you that for every interjection that I did, I made, I will add one minute. We are doing exactly that. All right. You see, the point is that I don't even know how to start. Let me say good morning to your viewers and good morning to everybody here. Now, Shoko, this is the first time. After the death of my father, I have missed him. And I have missed the people of old. As we sit here, everything that is going on, it, it, it makes me think that what kind of Ghana do we have? There is a clear abuse of our constitution, the supreme law of the land. This is our country, Ghana. And we should do everything possible to oppose the rule of the person. <laughs> is it not clear what it is? And I always say that the magnanimity of the NDC in Parliament and how nice the Speaker is has brought us thus far. Because it is so clear and apparent that in the Parliament of Ghana, you don't have a majority. And I will say it forever and I will say it every day. But because the Right Honorable Speaker allowed one person to do business and behave as if he is MPP, now they are calling themselves majority. Parliament is 137, 137 plus one. Mm -hmm. When you go into the books of the EC, it is 137, 137 plus one. That one person is independent. And as long as he remained independent, he should have been on his or her own and stayed there. And when there is voting, he can vote with the NPP, but not to add up. Immediately the voting finishes, then he goes to his seat. Fortunately, he became second deputy speaker. 
So that is not, MPP is not majority. Sometimes it is so sad when you hear them that we are majority by which, which margin, by which angle. Now tell me, I mean seriously. And the the reason that is said is because the independent candidate does, you know, vote. It does not mean that you um, are majority. The, if you vote MPP. along, you are not a member. And you see, H, me, I'm not a lawyer. I don't want ever to be a lawyer. But, oh, yes, don't look at me like that. My house is full I want of, to ask why, but I think I shouldn't. No, I got an admission to Gimpa Law School, Kramanko. Oh, well, my, my, my home is full of lawyers. Okay. It's chaotic. Oh. Everything is legal, legal, legal. So the point is that uh, my little brain that is in my head, that is not a lawyer's brain. Hmm? When I read the Constitution, it is so categorical. G and H. Especially the H. I have read it over, over and over again. I want to see what is in there. You don't need an interpretation when there is a shall clause which is mandatory. And even in the constitution of the MPP, the moment you cross carpet to be independent and you stand against an approved candidate of the party, you automatically, what is the meaning of automatic? I, um, Beatrice will tell us. You, you are, instant, instantaneous. Automatically. Okay. So why is it that in your own case, in your own constitution, you are saying that when you go off, you automatically forfeit your member of membership of the party when people are in parliament they are there as well they are not there as kids they are not there as kindergarten kids they are there as members of parliament representing a party so if they are there the moment they shift they lose their right to sit on that party's ticket it is it is plain and simple i don't know why the noises everybody say that is why i say i miss my father and i miss the people of old and I also miss people like Jerry John Rollins in this matter. Because somebody should stand up and speak. And it's as if there are no men in this nation. And everybody is quiet. Going round in circles. Saying that, oh, we want Ghana to be intact. Ghana will be intact. If parliament fight, they fight inside. They don't fight on the streets of Ghana. Fighting in parliament. When you go to UK, Labour and Conservative, at the point they fought. When you go to, uh, uh, it has happened in, in, in Botswana. But fighting is not the way. I am go. saying that, leave them. But I am telling you that the truth must be told. If you don't tell the truth, then you the are. Truth? The truth is that people have forfeited their positions in their parties. So they, they, they can no longer sit there as their party representatives. It's as simple as ABCD. And when the people were doing, they didn't see. The MPP is in denial. It is like something has happened to you and you don't want to accept and do something about it. This MPP, they are just in denial. Because you see, the magnanimity of the, the speaker has made them feel that they are majority. The tables have turned. Things have changed. When they were doing things to um, the Suhum um, uh, um, PC or the independent candidate and um, Mamele Morrison, they didn't think through it. And I always say that they should, as in Parliament, leader of the House, when these things go on, you don't think through it. Okay, what clause did they use to sack Alan Jemartin? Is it not the same 312 for feature? What did they use to sack, uh, um, what is his name? Nano Hininto. Yabuabian Samoa. Is it not the same thing? And this uh, clause in the MPP constitution is in tandem with article g h and uh, g and h 97, 97. g and h a shall so what are we talking about in their own party constitution and it doesn't show procedure they say oh the, what procedure when you go to 97 g and h it does not tell you how you should let these people live but when you go to a b c d e f the provisions therein tells you how you exact those provisions that's when you stay out of parliament for 15 times, you need to write to the speaker to tell the speaker A, B, C, D. If you do not do that, you'll be held before the privileges committee. That is procedure. But when it comes to G and H, it does not tell us the procedure. It does not say that you should go to court to come and exact it. It does not tell you that the party will write to you. No. 
And this president was set by Honorable Okwe in 2020. He actually sat a siyama from the chamber. So right now, as we stand now, if there was adequate time, these three people, four people will be off and there will be a by-election. But you see, you cannot have a by-election. With just a few months. That is the point. The so you, you, you have to lick your wounds. Which your, means what? Your people are gone. You have become minority. So the people no longer have representation. They have no... You see, Sal. San Trophy, Akpa, Fulolobi. Do they have representation? Four solid years. They are there. Even now, I haven't seen any uh, um, ally or any instrument which says that... CI, who says that they are going to create a, a, a constituency for them. Have they, have they not been there with that representation? They are there. They are there for Soli who has spoken. Everybody is quiet. It's left with two, three months. So if people have taken a decision that has come to affect their personal decisions, that have come to affect their party and parliament, why do you want to change the trajectory of events? This one is clear. This one is clear. You see, this MPP, eh, this particular MPP, they just do things anyhow. They don't respect us. They don't care. Look, look when Jay Kufo was president, eh, I always akin it to Jay Kufo. When he even made a mistake, he said, I'm sorry. I remember he was asked, why has he taken 88 ministers? He said, I'm sorry. I said it like this. But when I got in there, the situation was different. He actually apologized to the nation. Today, this thing has happened. You say you still hold on that you are this. Look, the letter. The letter they have written. In that letter, I think we also need some interpretation from the Supreme Court. Because you see, that provision in the Constitution is talking about a normal situation where Parliament is adjourned. Right now, there is a circumstance. They have put it in there. That under the circumstances. So I believe that there should also be an interpretation of 1213. Mm -hmm. To know that now that parliament has been adjourned, so we should that, go back to the Supreme yes, Court. Yes, the to Supreme Court should to give us a, an interpretation of how we should also go about this one to open but, parliament. But, but Anaya, all of this affects government's business, and there are there are which, matters before. Please, which business is that? There's please, a long list. Na, please, which business? If There's they, a long list. Now, nah, if they wanted business, mm -hmm. they should have stayed in there and done business. I'm not you, speaking in reference to the memo. But, but even without the memo, no, but who is there still my remains government business now to be Ashoko, conducted. Now, Ashoko, who is in government? Who should be more yes. interested in making sure that government business works? That's why they've written a memo. You have written a memo when you left. You at least sit at that place. It does not, because really, if putting everything together, there is no majority. You see, typically, eh, there should have been government side, opposition side, 137 137 they should have shared the chairmanship of the committees then one independent and the condition should be that you vote with them because you see what even was done in parliament was wrong because you see when you look at the age former mp was an independent candidate and he couldn't have gone and said that he was adding on to mpp because for he that, couldn't have voted with the MPP. No, voted, but not be part of them. If you vote at a particular point in time, when you finish voting, you go back into your space and declare yourself as independent. So you don't make one party majority. Because then age applies. Do you get me? Mm. When you look at the age, typically, my constitution is on here, it applies. So, uh, Formula MP should have been on his own. You, I vote with you, then I go back. That is what it should be. Government business is in their own business. Do you, the thing that they have listed there, which one affects us directly? When they take the loan, we don't even know where it goes. IMF money comes, you don't know how they use it. They are still taking loans, piling debt on our heads. Wh which one is important to, to the livelihood, to me? That I don't have to, I am not able to buy tomatoes. I'm not able to eat three times daily. That I'm, I'm now saying that I'm slimming because I eat once. Yes, once a well, day. You look, very, you look very lovely. But yeah, the, but I'm the, saying that once a day. The, the point about H is that the elected member must join the political party. And that is so, what I'm saying. But if, yes. you, if you are majority, if MPP is majority in parliament, you join them. 
No. What is I I I I I I, I ah, suppose yes, that, that joining that, that, the party no, is like you become a member. No, no, that that's not what yes. the party must have had yes. a majority see, yes. before you join. join. In this case, they do not have. And, and you join. And your joining will not make them. That's yes. the point. That is what I'm saying. Okay, not to say that they have become a member of the party. No. All right. Okay. You get me. Yes. You, you you are independent. You are not MPP. Maybe you are MPP in heart and in blood. Something happened and you got angry. But I'm saying that once you went on an independent ticket, you should be independent at all and true. Yes. Okay. But when you want to Please vote, for me. do you get me? If you want to vote for, okay, for instance, let's assume, I'll conclude. Let's assume that Siama belonged to one political, like we have Asamia. Mm -hmm. Asamia was in parliament. She was on her own. Mm -hmm. she, won she always voted with whoever she thought was, I mean, the policies were reasonable okay and he never went she never went to join any party but this one you are saying you are majority you are not all right Two, 137 137 now all you right. have lost four three okay. so you have come down okay um i'm coming to you Rodlin, but bitch is i stand corrected all the the videos we saw on that day um at the at international conference center where parliamentary proceedings were taking place where people in mpp t-shirts yes so now I, I, stand, I, I, stand, I stand corrected. Yeah. You just said that when Kufo makes a mistake, he corrects himself. I'm correcting, correcting myself. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. Rodlin. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yes, Rodlin. Yeah, so uh, uh, your general assessment of all of this, um, from, from, from your, your standpoint, from my standpoint as, yes, as okay. a member of the Alliance for Revolutionary Alliance Change. Alliance for Revolutionary Change. I would like to say good morning to um, all viewers and all Ghanaians. Um, a special good morning to Mr. Alan Tramateng and also to the people of Ashanti. Thank you very much for coming out in your numbers to support us. I'd like to look at it from a different angle. Okay. Um, I'm looking at it as to what has brought us to this level. First and foremost, um, this was a parliamentary issue. And um, all that we could hear was going to the Supreme Courts. And somehow along the, 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 the few years that this government has come into being, every time it's we will go to court or go to courts, anything, go to courts. And so they went to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court gave a judgment or made a statement that affected the running of parliament to the extent that um, we now have a majority and a minority saying we are not this, we are not that. So the Supreme Court is the one that is supposed to be having oversight responsibilities for the executive and the legislature. So who looks after? Who, who, who then checks the Supreme Court? It's us, the people. And we can't always say that whatever the Supreme Court does is right because it is also just a body that is also representative of us and elected or uh, appointed by the president of this country. Now, Shoko, the Supreme Court has become an institution that is so predictable. As soon as a case goes to the Supreme Court, depending on which side of the uh, political divide you're in, you can just say how it's going to end. Is that so? Yes, it's very predictable. It's either 5-0, five, five, zero, zero, nine, zero. And it seems that, I mean, a Supreme Court that is made up of almost about 15 people, how come it's always a certain particular group of people that are always empaneled? We would like to know from, the, from, from her lordship, uh, 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 Gertrude Tokenu, why is it that out of about 15 um, Supreme Court judges, it is always a particular group of people the names that are mentioned, they are, they are names that we can identify as either being tainted with MPP political colors or something else. But I think and I believe that every Supreme Court judge is appointed by merit and not because you're a member of a political party or you're a sympathizer of a political party or you're friends to the president. That is how it's supposed to be. Meritocracy. And that is what we believe in, that every position in this country should be done by meritocracy and not because you are a friend or you are a member of a political group. Um, public confidence is waning. 
for our Supreme Court. A lot of people are not happy about the way things are happening in the Supreme Court. And I'm saying this because I remember in 2014, um, Her Lordship Georgina Wood came out with an electronic uh, empaneling process. process. That was to stop this kind of perception of having this feeling that the Supreme Court is doing the bidding of a particular political party or a particular person. That was to stop it. Because you wouldn't know which, num which person is going to be called, and therefore you can't say that somebody has been seen behind the scenes. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? What happened to it? How come that in 2014, Georgina Wood used it when uh, uh, her lordship, Sophia um, Akufu, she also used it. Fast forward, Chief Justice Enim Yebwa did not. He was also empaneling people that were just like how this present Chief Justice um, Getri Token is doing. Why? What happened to that electronic device or that electronic system? This, this is in light of the fact that we have a vice president that is opting to come be a president saying that he's digitalizing and using technology for everything. We introduce technology into our courts and we are not using it. I strongly believe that if the Supreme Court, the empaneled judges of the Supreme Court um, had other names, maybe, or other people, apart from the names that came that people were pointing to the fact that they had some political colors, maybe Ghanaians wouldn't be so angry. Do you, do you have, um, or do you disagree with the ruling of the Supreme Court in this matter? Yes, I do. Because I believe what, that, what I is believe, problem with the my ruling? problem is that I believe that Parliament has its own way of solving its own problems. And I don't see why um, uh, the Honorable Afenyo Markins should have jumped up to the Supreme Court. I think that they should have found a way to deal with it within the presence of Parliament. They needed a matter to be interpreted, a yes, constitutional and, matter to be interpreted. And we have been told by other lawyers that they should have gone to the High Courts first before jumping to the Supreme Court. Yeah. So, uh, the, so I, I think the arguments that the lawyers have been making are two-sided. There are those who believe that this matter lies within Article 99, which requests or states that a matter of this nature should be brought before the High Court. And the issue of interpretation. No lawyer but, but, I know, but, but did they interpret? Which is when I come to you, perhaps you but can anyway, explain But anyway, did they interpret? Did they interpret, interpret, interpret yes. the law? You see, we, we, we seem to be moving up and down with the same issue. Let's take a, a, a look at Domi Levo. What yes. happened to Domi Levo? Domi Levo had justice after two years. Sal is still on our conscience. Mm -hmm. You think those, those, those people in Sal, they are not important? So um, a Supreme Court comes out and says, okay, stay ex execution of whatever it is, and we are now going to look at it. You have not read, you have not read and taken note of whatever it is. But you, you are able to say that stay executions, if it's going to affect any one group, it's affecting somebody by all means. So who are you shielding? And that is where I'm saying the perception is that you are shielding the MPP. Okay. That's what I mean. That's the perception. You are shielding the MPP. Mm. And that is wrong. Every time that the Supreme Court has to agitate on a matter, adjudicate on a matter, it looks like it's skewed towards the MPP. To the extent that even Kandapa, Kandapa the uh, National Security Coordinator, I think he is, or Minister, had reason to say that every time that it, it, it looks like we are winning, it's not good for us or you're doing the case for us. It's not good for us. You know what that means? It means that we cannot even trust the Supreme Court to deliver justice to the people of this country. And that's not a good thing. It's not a good thing. It's bad. We should, that, that, that particular institution should that's, be beyond yeah, reproach. That should be the institution that we should all believe in. So let's not give ourselves the opportunity 
to run down that institution because we believe that because such a person has put us on, this president has brought me and I have to do its bidding. Or this party supported me and I have to do its bidding. Let us see neutrality. Let us see people. I mean, you can't tell me that five people or seven people will sit on a case and they all think the same. And that makes them judges. Even when you write essays, we all have our different viewpoints when we write essays in school, in class. And I don't think that we are going to use the same wording and we all come to the same conclusions. So why is it that at this particular moment, we are always having five zero, seven zero, and the like? Nobody dissents. Hmm. It doesn't make sense. That, that, well, I, I guess I shouldn't ask you that. Probably when I come to Beaches, so I'll ask you whether that, that happens um, sometimes. But let me come to Ellen first. Ellen, I have a message here um, from a lawyer who's watching us. His name is Nana Osebunsu. He says, um, please, when elephants fight, is the ground that suffers. What will happen if the Speaker recalls Parliament and the NDC also decides to stage a walkout? Because then it will mean the MPP alone will be in Parliament and they will not have the numbers to transact business. The earlier two seats of the MPs, the earlier these two sets of MPs smoke the peace pipe, the better it will be for all Ghanaian citizens. Ellen, how do you respond to this? What will happen if the Speaker does um, go by this request to recall Parliament and the MPP also, the NDC also decide that they are going to stage a walkout? As I said, I think it's, 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 it's the major and minus that they have been doing since the beginning of this, this fourth. Um, it's the eighth parliament. Eh? The eighth parliament. It's the eighth parliament. What I find quite interesting is how we all, there's an issue involving of national interest. And this issue touches on constitutional matters. It touches on parliament's procedures. It touches. So for me, I see it as a form of also growing uh, our whole system. It might not be it might not be comfortable. It might be, you know, getting getting things in the way when we need to get things done. But we need to some of these things happen, and you need to get it sorted out. What I find quite interesting is how we go at institutions of the nation when something doesn't go in our favour. What has the Supreme Court got to do? Why are we attacking the Supreme Court? Why are we attacking decisions of the Supreme Court? earlier decisions of the Supreme Court. When they don't go in your favor, you attack them. But when they go in your favor, they are the best judges in the world. For me, I think our Supreme Court, all the members in there have gone through a certain test to be in there. You just don't get up and go and sit at the Supreme Court. They go through Parliament. Don't they go through vetting? We, we go through their, their work as judges, whether it was all the way from the, the lower courts, all the way up there before they are put on those seats. When you talk about empaneling of the, of, the, of the Supreme Court for cases, and yes, other people started something and others didn't do. I mean, how does that affect the work of the judges? That we go out, all out, and just attack them and attack them and attack them. If you have a case, go to them, let them sort it out. The fact that seven of them agrees on something and none of them dissent, so it's what, they, they, are, they are following another political party. And you have to mention that it is the, the, the NPP. But whenever they vote and it goes against the NPP, then they are the, the, the right, they are the best judges in, in this world. We should stop attacking our institutions. We should stop attacking the people who are doing the work. If you don't agree with them, go through the procedure and get get your 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 matter also examined, and then we look at it. When it is in your favor, excellent. When it is not in your favor, they are working for somebody because they are friends with somebody. I mean, this sort of thing we ha we have to stop it. We continuously attack them, but no matter what you do, you still go back to them. I mean, the if the Speaker of Parliament was a law unto himself and he was, there were no checks and balances. You think that he would have said that I've received something from the Supreme Court. Let me go take a look at it. I have adjourned this whole matter. I will take a look at it. We all work in tandem with each other. We don't attack them. You don't agree with them, go back there. I had one of the NDC MPs who is a lawyer. He's also going back, he's also going to the Supreme Court to contest the Speaker's decision to put them on, um, to, to go, what do you call it? To what? vacate their Super seats. Vacate. Whatever it is. It is all part of the process. Let us go through it. The gentleman who just asked the question that if the NDC also mm -hmm. decides not to come, then we yeah. continue with the kindergarten play chairs that I've been talking about. The NDC MPs, in my estimation, in this particular matter, right from 
2021, January 7th have been behaving like kindergarten children. Okay, I, I and think they will we continue, I think and they will said, continue. You said this that earlier. Is, that is my, oh, you want me to, you know, with, all right, I'll change kindergarten, respect. primary school children. With all due and respect, they let's not refer to them as with, children. The, and they will continue to we finish this particular parliament. Because it obviously, is the MPP side that staged the work Obviously, it, not is, the it, is, it, is, it is their behavior. When they staged the work they were working in the, we all saw pictures or videos of them singing and going around like they were doing music. Well, they were in the house. Yes, doing music. But when the speaker so I have, came, I have, to, I have every when the speaker right, came, I have every right to the describe MPP them. Side were not there. To describe them as I see fit. And in my estimation, they are behaving like crutch children, uh, 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 babies in crutch, babies in kindergarten, and perhaps as toddlers in primary school. I see. Until they all well, decide well, that they well, are going to behave like well, adults that they are. Well, and adults who we, have been sent to parliament by we, their constituents um, Ellen, will continue this till that this parliament I, I ends. I give you the opportunity to redo I mean, that statement, but if you will not, I, then I'm, going to, ourselves, I'm still um, putting from, it from in that it. But children. the point is that it is the MPP side that left the house. because And the MPP side left the house because mm -hmm. as the kindergarten children decided to sit on their chairs, they decided to behave like adults and not to engage in the fight and move on. Because the last time that how, they decided to does, engage how in fight that? and move them from their chairs, it brought this whole nation monumental disgrace. So I will still insist, in this particular parliament, All right. the MPs on the NDC side continues to behave like the kindergarten children that they are. This parliament, fortunately, is on its way out. It's just like with three months. We'll still continue with this. Ellen. This one go in, this one comes out. We'll continue Ellen. until this parliament Ellen. ends. Ellen, Ellen. You said a few things which I've given you the opportunity to retract. Why should I retract? Because they are disrespectful. They are disrespectful. It's, it's my description of them. And I will still All insist. Right. They let are me, behaving let me, let like just, let just, children. Let me just um, also reiterate that we dissociate ourselves with um, the derogatory statements um, that Ellen has made about uh, members of parliament. But NDC members of parliament. All right. Be very specific about All it. All right. But um, Ellen, let me ask you this. Do the MPP members of parliament respect the speaker? That would be difficult for me to answer. I'm not in Parliament. From all actions, oh, but I you see said that, a lot about the I conduct of that, people in Parliament. I see that the Do they acknowledge do they acknowledge the leadership of the speaker? Obviously. So if they do acknowledge the leadership of the speaker, why could they not simply wait? Even if wait they were to way. stand even if they were to stand people who in have the chamber uh, 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 no. to listen to what the speaker had to say no. on this matter we have then this government business stand. that they have written about there were chairs the mps should stand i'm asking you a question they should there stand were chairs. and wait there were chairs but because mm -hmm. of the disagreements about who's majority and who's minority the mpp the ndc side sat down and the mpp side believed the ndc side sat down where the mp on the right side which the MPP, they were not supposed to sit there was a disagreement that's a disagreement. Exactly. So sit where you are supposed so, to sit. So, so, the question, so the question I'm asking you is that if they acknowledge the leadership of the speaker, why could they not simply wait, wait to when? listen to what the speaker had to what, say on what, the matter? What, what I find right. interesting is how you, we have you, you are time. refusing to call out we the NDC MPs who refused to sit where they were supposed yeah. to sit. You but you are rather extra, on the case on the MPP MPs who says we will not we come and fight you over our seats. All and right. that's that you have a problem with that. All right. The oh, point no, is this the MPC MP should questions. have sat where they were going to sit. So right. the speaker came in to determine what was supposed to be done. So if there's any form of disrespect here, it is from the NDC MPs, All right. not the MPP ones. All right. Um, Beatrice, let me come to you now. Okay, I, I, I want to say that growing up, when something happens, my mother will call you. And when you're about speaking, she will say you should stand in a certain way because you're a lady. And when you start speaking, she will also say, don't start this way because you're a lady. So there are things she can say in public and there are things she can say in private. I think this morning, I will not glorify the disrespect. I will not descend into the gutters. I think that we have to raise the level of the discussion. And so far, it was a very smooth discussion until such a disrespect. And people who have stood elections and they have won and they have come to represent of some of the constituencies, 55,000, 105,000. You went to an election, you couldn't get more than 10 votes. 
So you ought to respect people who have done what you can oh, do. You have even gone for one. Yes. So try and go That's for why one. Why do you go for your side? Why do you go for an election? Ellen, Ellen, you you Ellen, even have the nerve to So you should Ellen, know Ellen, that you talk about Ellen, it. That I this still insist yes, your MP back in that. Ellen, you've had your time. Anytime she comes at me personally, you will not finish this program. You have not even had the nerve and the guts to go for an election. You want to talk about someone who has gone for one. Ellen, you have had your time. My dear, go for an election first before you talk about people who have gone for with all your oh, you have you've had your time. To go for. I haven't had you've my had time. You shall call her out. You have had your time personally. When you come at me because personally, you ask me. The fact. You, you ask me. As we sit here, you, you haven't had, had the nerve in your party to even you go for, for, for a police station election. <laughs> you are talking about me. Ellen. As you sit here, Ellen, you've had, had, had your time. Ellen, you've had your time. Beatrice, please make a submission without, without referring, referring to Without referring to me, then you Let's can make go. yours. Otherwise, as you sit here, your own party have no respect. You can be talking about someone who has gone for an election. So I'm have saying that. Ellen, pick up Ellen. Phones, go for an election. Then you can talk Ellen. about that until that idea goes straight to your point. So I'm saying that we ought to respect people when we say... You can describe, you can disagree with them. This morning, we've all disagreed with the Supreme Court. Nobody has had to call Supreme Court judges kindergarten children to make their... So that point has to be made. And Nasha, it is not enough that you only dissociate the station. Sometimes you have to do more than that. But I will not belabor the point. The point we are making is that principles must matter in national discourse. And people who do one thing should not all of a sudden change their position merely because it does not see them. When you do that, I maintain that it tells you how decision about the 32 million Ghanaians or so are made. The decisions by members of the MPP occupying every position, I'm sure are just made haphazardly without regard for the welfare and the future of the nation. If you read the MPP's constitution, specifically... Article 9. Three, one, and two. The, when you read that the party who goes independent, blah, 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 says that automatically forfeit his so automatically means that the party need not do anything about that. And you know the irony? The Suhu MP told us that immediately the Speaker made that communication to Parliament, and not on prayer, who is the whip, took him off their WhatsApp group. So why is it that he's a member of the MPP, but he has been taken off a group belonging to MPP MPs? You see, intellectual dishonesty must have a limitation. Public discourse is not, or governance is not what you feel and what you like and what you dislike. The reason we are having to do this and the reason we are here is because Nanado behaves like an Arabian king. What's that? Where he does not see the difference between what we call constitutionalism, the fetish place and the limitations place on your powers. We've had these issues before, 2020. Whether a member has crossed carpet, has forfeited the seat, we've had those issues before. Parliament has always found a way to go about this. There are MPP, MPs, seeing? yes and Tenyo Nu and all those people. Parliament have found very civilized ways to go about it. The reason we are discussing this mess and this constitutional crisis is because of the president's ego. When Esiama left the party to go and contest as an independent candidate, he went to Fomina to say that he cannot work with Esiama. He cannot do this, he cannot do this. And on the basis of that, the party wrote to Michael Quay, and Michael Quay delivered that ruling, which I agreed with him. And today, you have set that precedent. You think this is the first time it is happening. Parliament has always found a way to deal with it internally. And we didn't have to be discussing this chaos. Because Nanano doesn't like you. If he doesn't like you, he will not bring development to you. That's how he's governing. He told the Aflau chief, go and use your own resources to finish the e-blocks. After all, you don't vote for me. When the spillage happened, you move your studio to the Volta region. He told them that you don't vote for me. If not because I'm president, I, I, I wouldn't have been coming here. You said that was when a light-hearted light statement. The president goes around joking. Governance now is a joke. When the Kung Fu chiefs came, what did he say? And it was taken in, in 
out so what about the Ekunfi chief what about the fact that the president commands chiefs to get up and then greet him if you don't do that the bodyguard may probably show that you it matters not you see we are living in a time of crisis crisis which we have imposed on ourselves because we voted for a group of people who feel so entitled as if ghana is their inheritance check the record of the mpp from the time of Nkrumah, they have always believed that ghana is their inheritance they believe that they are more ghanaians than anybody and so they don't treat ghana like the resources are your are ours look at what they are doing with the japa look at what they did with pds look at how nanado is using state money dishing it out to the children as if there is no tomorrow we are in this constitutional crisis because the president does not respect what we call constitutionalism every president knows that there are limitations everything may be permissible but not everything is beneficial All right. until we vote this arrogant right. government out nothing will change all right thank you beaches i'm coming to you nanaya hmm. now we are we are in some crisis so oh, is unfortunately you have voted for nebuchadnezzar sorry we have voted for nebuchadnezzar who is nebuchadnezzar and we know Nanadu and these people. They are Nebuchadnezzar. Yes, they are Nebuchadnezzar. From the Bible. I, uh, we are in some autocracy. They are Nebuchadnezzar. Double Nebuchadnezzar that we are dealing with. This one is a simple matter. My dear, when uh, <laughs> Honorable Okwe, I respect him a lot. But when he, right Honorable Okwe, when he decided to take out a Siyama, why didn't MPP go to the Supreme Court for interpretation? What has changed? You, what, nothing has changed. It's the same law, the same provision that was used. Why didn't they go to Supreme Court for interpretation? Right now, as we see, we don't even have an interpretation. Do you get it? We don't have an interpretation. Because me, I thought that when they went to court, they would come with an interpretation. Which you say, this is forward, this is now, this is the past. There's no interpretation as we stand now. But you see, the G and H, I say it is clear. But because we have people who believe that they are better than every Ghanaian, and that their wishes is our command, and that when they want to do something, we cannot question them. Now it is unfortunate. You see, I didn't bring my constitution. But I wish somebody would look at Article 115 for me. 115 is there. It is clear that when proceedings, debates, are done in parliament 115 says uh -huh. that there shall be freedom of speech uh -huh. debate and proceedings in parliament mm -hmm. and that freedom shall not mm -hmm. be impeached or mm -hmm. questioned mm -hmm. in any court mm -hmm. or place uh -huh. out of parliament yeah, exactly this is a procedure and a debate in parliament they have not even ended talking about it so what would have happened if they all stayed there and said okay let's look at a b c d it is like running to your father when you think that you, you have a father who can shield you. So when you go out and you go and insult people in the street, you quickly run home and the gate is locked. That is what is happening. That is what is happening. Every time they are running to the courts, couldn't they have stayed in there and deliberated on it? Why do we want to weaken our state institution? Why do the separation of powers? There's the legislature, there's the executive, there's the judiciary, there's the four the state. You see, the point is that I think the time has come to even amend and review our constitution. Mm. That going forward, you see, the erroneous impression of the MPP government as it stands today, that because they have ministers in parliament, they rule over parliament. I think the time has come to review that there will not be any minister in parliament. If you are an MP, you stay MP. If you want to be minister, you are out. So that all these things will be dealt with. Because you see this, so that there is a clear dichotomy between the executive and the legislature. Because I hear things like, how can we be in government and we are in minority? And so what? If you had done your work properly, this wouldn't have happened. You you fell from one six nine, like I said, Nebuchadnezzar, to one three seven, because you didn't do your things properly, because you took Ghanaians for granted. 
and they voted against you. And that is your bane. You have to and you have to take it, accept it, and move on. And you haven't learned your lessons. You continue to do same. And that is why today, three of your members are off. Formula. This is happening because if they did not mistreat the Formula MP, Esiama, he wouldn't have gone independent. He would still be with MPP. He went and he won. They have mistreated and entered into uh, um, Suhum, the chief of staff. She and her, uh, uh, her assistant, what is the person's name? Uh, Potozwa. I know Potozwa is an enzyme, but that is how they call him. Proto is it not when you went to school? Protozoa, somebody, it's an enzyme, but I don't know. That is his name. And he's in the office of the chief of staff. And somebody said, said that chief of staff himself admitted that that is where he took his, her trouble. And this man was pushed out. And man Mileto has been pushed out. The people have not learned that there are certain things you don't do in a political party because the political party is like family. So that when you are in there, you look after each other. You don't upset them. And it's not everybody that you have said that will let go. There are some people you have said they will not let go. And you see the point is that now, I am even surprised that the MPP is going round, 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 round like this. They are not kindergarten kids. You see, when somebody goes let's, to... Let's drop the matter of this. No, my dear, I am very hurt because when you go to an... To please, when such. you go to an, an election, eh? It is not easy to go through even campaigning. Do you get me trying to get a position? Yeah. The, the trajectory that you will travel, it is not easy. The things that you will see, even within your constituency. So even if somebody attempts it, mm, and somebody who is victorious should be respected, no matter what. You see, marching for us comrades, if you don't understand what we comrades do, marching is a form of solidarity for us. If you don't understand what we come with, you don't you don't condemn what we come with we do. Do you get me? Those of us, those of us who are who are within the socialism uh, 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 um, era, uh, uh, those of us, mm. do you get the CPP? Those of us within that uh, that, that enclave, we march, <laughs> we move forward. Are you explaining what we saw on the floor? That is what I'm saying. So, Tuesday. yes, so you do not, you, if it is not within your ideology, you, you, you don't understand it. Me, I understand it. Because when things happen, we march. Okay. And it is part of the things that we do. And I'm also saying, where is the Siama? Where is Mamile? Where is uh, um, the Suhum MP? Hmm? They have to come and speak. Besides, why are we making so much noise? NDC2 has lost one. NDC has lost, isn't it? They have also lost one now. So why are we centering it on only MPP? They, when they did it, they did it. It includes their own. So why? We haven't also heard them saying that, oh, we want to stay. We want them to come out and tell us whether they want to stay, whether they are staying with MPP or they are not, or they are not part of it. But you see now, the constitution will abide. Okay. That is the supreme law of the land. And no Nebuchadnezzar or Darius will come and, uh, and abuse our constitution. No, the supremacy Danaya. of the law is within the ambit of the constitution. All right, Danaya. Um, Rodney, you have the final word. Okay. So, um, Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm a member of the National Interest Movement, which joined up to form the Alliance for Revolutionary Change. So I come from a CSO. I just want to ask the CJ why she has abandoned the electronic empowering system. Okay. I want to ask her that question. Because that is what will actually you know, engender confidence within the society to know that nobody knows who's going to be empaneled, nobody knows who's going to be taking judgments for anybody. It's important. It's very important because as we go through this election, there might come a time when we might have to go to courts. And as such, we need that kind of trust to believe in the people who are going to sit there to 
see to it that we get judgments. Um, I don't really understand this whole thing about the, the majority and minority. 137, 137, that, just like she says. That's, that's it. And you see, if you're a member of a political party, once you cross carpet, you're out. If you go and join another political party, you are out. If you go and even speak on behalf of the opposition to your party, you are out. So if these um, four people have decided to go independent, it means they are out of their various parties. And as such, I think that what the speaker did was the right thing. And I still believe and stand by the fact that the Supreme Court, court had no business in getting involved in this. Honorable Afenyo Markins went to the Supreme Court because he knew that this was what he was going to get, a stay. Because that is all that they've always believed in, going to courts. Because they have packed all courts with NPP people. I'm not going to mince words on that. We are here. The president has nominated somebody for the Supreme Court. Somebody who owns dual nationality, a Canadian. But for the fact that there is this impasse, maybe he would have been sitting there and being passed to go and become another member of our Supreme Court. And you say we shouldn't talk about the Supreme Court. We have everything, every reason to speak about the Supreme Court because our whole hope, everything that we hold supreme, freedom and justice, ends at the Supreme Court. And therefore, if we cannot trust our judges, if we cannot trust that one person that we have put there as Chief Justice, to do right for the people of this country, then we cannot say that we are going to have a peaceful election or a peaceful country. That's a fact. And it's not just, she's not, only, she's not just empaneling uh, 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 Supreme Court judges, she's empaneling High Court, Magistrate, everything. And this is happening. Let's go back to the electronic assignment system, that's all. So that we can all get the, 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 the things done for all of us to have faith, for all of us to trust, all of us to believe that she's doing the right thing. It is not a matter of putting in other people to sit because I want particular results. Mm. We don't want that. Now, Shoko, I have not finished because you're looking at your time. You gave everybody time. Let me finish. <laughs> I haven't said anything. You were looking at me. <laughs> so I, I got that message. <laughs> Please go ahead. So, We've been given a little more time. Yes, so, so the little ahead. more time that I want to say is that I, I don't see why the MPP should be complaining because they walked out. If you wanted to protest, they could have stood in that chamber. They could have stood there and protested. We are not sitting and we are not walking out. You understand? That would have shown another sign of protest. So if other people decided to march, like Nanaya said, we march for the, for, for the, the socialist group, you know, so for me, I am just beginning to say that the perception that judgments are skewed, the speed with which the Supreme Court, less than a day, they came out with, with, with something. Nine Me, hours. Nine hours. You were able to come out with something. Uh, um, uh, what's okay. his name? Gregory Afoko is still languishing somewhere. Yes. Opunis case, it is still there. Um, so many LGBTQ. other cases, LGBTQ is all there, and, no, and you have not come out. You have not. These are things that affect Ghanaians. You have not been able to. But when it affected MPP, you came out fast, within nine hours. Why wouldn't I say that you are in their pockets? Why wouldn't I say that? So these are the things that we are talking about. We need a judicial system that we can trust. And therefore, from now going, we must see something, some changes within the judiciary. We must. Hmm. Now, can I get to All right. a second? I, I, I can give you a second. Yes. Right now. I also no, I, I, can, I can give you a second. Okay. Um, producer, can I give, can I give each just, person... Just a second. 30 seconds. Yes, I just... Okay. okay um, uh, with, with, with the three of you, your permission, we can only give Auntie Nanaya yeah. 30 oh, seconds. I just, Nanaya, yeah. All right. Sure? Yes. All right. Please go ahead. I, I just want to um, encourage my mommy, uh, um, Morrison. Morrison that she should be strong. She's a woman. A woman of um, seven children that she should be strong and 
if nobody stands with her, me, I stand with her. Okay. For, for whatever they are doing to her, she should be strong and steadfast. And what are they doing to her? Oh, but I mean, they brought her somebody to, right. to be strong and steadfast and believe in herself that as a woman she can do because you see this is even against the affirmative action we are asking for women to be in parliament and you are taking the women out but um madam mami let me i stand with you all right yes. thank you so much uh, nanaya thank you ellen thank you rodlin thank you beatrice can i read just three messages before we wrap up please all right i, I can't Okay, I'm, I'm so sorry to all of you who have sent in so many messages which I'm unable to read. Um, please pardon me. Please pardon me. Uh, but um, this has been big issues on TV3 New Day. Thank you so much for sending your messages in. And we can continue on this conversation online with the hashtag TV3 New Day. Now, step into the world of Dewa 539 for your chance to win big with Dewa Direct, Dewa Chop Money. And with Dewa, all you have to do is dial star 446 hash and pick any number between 1 and 39 and win 20 times, 40 times or 400 times your stake. You can win cash every evening at 7 p.m. and on Sundays at 6 p.m. Early bears just love Dewa. At 10 a.m., dial star 446 hash and choose a number between 1 and 39. You can win 20 times, 40 times or 400 times your stake. So play Dewa-NLA.com or you can dial star 446 hash. If you need any help, Please call 055 626 and you can play or ask your questions. That's it for day one. That's it for big issues this morning. We'll be right back with more on TV3 New Day.